authorities and may God enlarge your coast. If only you walk with him, may he show his face. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you so much. This is my prophetic word for you tonight. That this year, your name shall be called Health Zeba. And your land is called Beulah. You are now changed from curse to blessing. Your life is no more a curse, but you are a blessing. And anything that was stopping you, the devil cannot work in this year. They will try, but they can never succeed because God is going to bring fire all over you. And whenever the enemy will try, the fire will destroy them. May God bless you. May God enlarge your course. May God be with you. May the favor, may the glory of God be with you. Thank you so much. Happy, happy new year this year. May God bless you. May God enlarge you. Thank you so much for me and from the Real Woman in Me team. I say God bless everybody on this platform. You are blessed and highly favored. Thank you for everybody. I know God has been faithful to all of us. And remember, every Monday we are on Praise TV, 10 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Your life will never be the same if you tune in. Tonight, I just have a little testimony to share with you tonight. And after this, I want to espouse somebody. I want to encourage somebody. I want to tell somebody that things can change. Things will change. Things can change and things will change. I was passing this evening and I went to a shop. And I'm, I, 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 I immediately, I, I, I almost entered the shop and I met a woman coming out from the shop. She said, woman of God, God bless you. And I said, amen. And she said, you know something, can I talk to you? I said, yes, I have a minute to talk to you for all this while. I said, what is it? He said, mommy, thank you for the words you are sharing on Facebook. It has been a blessing to me and my husband. You know what? Let's go and greet my husband. My husband is in the car. Let's greet my husband. I said, okay, let's go. She said, since I heard from you, my life has never been the same. And he said, go and thank my husband for me for he is the best man ever. I said, well, I said mommy, look at me. Really, when I look at her, she's so tiny, like somebody who is very, very sick. So sick. I said, Mommy, I am so sick. Very sick. So many health issues. This is not the way I was. I was a very beautiful woman with good body. And situations changed. But my husband has been a pillar to it all. He said, since I got sick, the doctor said I can't get pregnant again and all that. Everything the doctor said, I never hoped of having a child. But I just went to hospital and they said, I am pregnant. And I didn't believe it because my body and my system, they said I am gone. But I was able to carry this baby nine months and deliver this baby myself. And mommy... My husband never allows me to bath my kids. I bath my, he will bath his kids. I don't do it. He said, I'm sick. My husband allows me to sit down. He does everything. And I mean, everything. He takes care of me because I am not well. People are saying I've got AIDS. People are saying whatever. A whole lot of things. But my husband never listened to anybody. They even tell him to even leave me, divorce me, to marry another person and all that. But he has never he has stood with me through it all. Thank him for me. And I told the man, God will bless you for what you are doing for your wife. Because I know many men would have gone to cheat or leave their wife. Because seeing the woman I saw today, the man is a blessing. God bless you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. God bless you so much. And I, I was so happy. But then the Lord gave me this quotation. Then the Lord told me, go back to it and read it. I want to read it with you. That's Genesis chapter 2. I've been saying it every time. The Genesis chapter 2. Let me read from the verse 23. I know it's a quotation everybody knows. And Adam said, this is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of me. 
out of me. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. He said, and Adam said, this is now the bone of my bones. Is it true your wife is the bone of your bones? Then why do you treat her that way? You give promises to that woman. On the wedding day, every preparation today, like today, tomorrow, somebody's engagement, Saturday is their wedding. Preparation is ongoing, wedding, everything. You promise each other love. You gather people in the name that you've met a woman, you think she's a dream woman. You saw a woman, you think she's the bone of your bone. But now, you don't talk. I'm talking to you. Some of you are even at the edge of divorcing. Some of the women, are in, they just want to divorce. But that wasn't what God had for marriage. God realized that it was not good for the man to be alone. He realized that the woman cannot be complete without the man. Neither would the man be complete without the woman. Is it that we've lost the rules or we don't know anything about the rules when it comes to marriage? Is it that we are taking marriage on our own? Or we don't understand why God brought marriage, why God gave the woman to the man? Maybe we have forgotten all those things. Now marriage is being thought Mostly people follow books. I'm not against books. It's good. But the best book to follow is the Bible. The best rule, the best place to learn. I bless God for the insight that's given some of us to write books about marriage. Yes, it's good. You have to read and get information. But I'm telling you, the best book to read, it's the Bible. The foundation of marriage is in the Bible. He said, you shall become one flesh, one body. If you are one body, you will not starve your husband of sex. If you are one body, you will not starve your wife of sex. If you are one body, you will not hide your money from your wife or hide your money from your husband. If you are one body, when your wife is in a situation, you will not go at the back and cheat on her. If you are one body, one show, there is no difference. There is no man and there is no woman. We are one. When we were not married, there was a man and there was a woman. But now that we are married, we have become one body. What pains you will pain me. What makes you happy will also make me happy. Where is the marriage? Marriage and God. This is not marriage and man or marriage and your pastor. This is marriage and God. The wisdom God has given to marriage. The things you need to know before you say, I do to somebody, my dear. I always tell people, it's not the wedding that is important. It's not the gown, the best ring, the best gown. They are all part, it's beautiful. But what are you wearing the ring and the gown for? What is the essence of that day you want to wear white? Purity. We know marriage is based on purity. It's based on honesty, loyalty. It's based on the fear of God. God really loves marriage. That is why he brought it. But what do we see now? Young people marry at the age, within six, five months, they want divorce. Who told you marriage is a joke? It's a playground and people make it comfortable. And if you say people preach to the standard, they make even divorce comfortable for people to enjoy. My dear, I am not against anybody preaching anything. But what I'm against is we not listening and learning the right thing God wants us to learn. Let me tell you this here. Don't be afraid of whoever will speak against you. If only you are speaking the truth, say it the way it is. People will criticize you. People may not like what you are saying, but the truth has speak the truth. Don't just marry somebody because they have gone with shame and their past. My dear, the woman I met today, when she told me the way she was, she was somebody with the body, somebody with shape and all that. But today, they bought their, their, oh God, 
The buttons, the breasts, the shape, they are all gone because of sickness. She never knew that when they get to a certain stage in a marriage, it will be like this. It takes a faithful man, a faithful woman who understands what marriage is all about, and they will stick to death, do them part. We go and stand in the church or we stand in the family. When the family calls the, 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 the lady to come, they will ask the lady, they have brought things, should we accept? You say, yes, accept. Accept what? What did you say they should accept? Is it a, 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 the, the material thing she's showing you said they should accept? Do we understand what we do? Even when it's traditional marriage, families and families have to sit down. They give lists for, for the man to go and bring and come and take the woman. Means that that woman is a true well. She, she comes to complete the man. And that man completes that woman. When you get to the age, that is where someone, sometimes some of your parents will be giving you pressure. Go and marry. I, I don't blame them. But it's not right for anybody to give you pressure. But they know that when you get to a certain stage, you need that. It is not by force to marry. It is your decision. But let me tell you, if you want to do it, to do it well. Don't do it the way the world is doing it. Everybody is all about, it is good if you have the money to do parties. It's beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing you need to do to, 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 to feel okay. But the party is not my business. The church and the gown is not my business. But the meaning of marriage is something that you are entering into. Do you understand? He said, this is not the bone of my bones. The flesh of my flesh. Why the bone of your bone yesterday you promised to be with them? Five, six years to come, you want to divorce them. And anything we tell you, mommy, I didn't begin for this. Did you understand marriage before you married? Did you get the concept of marriage before you went to marry? So that do us part. I saw so many men, I saw so many women, but this particular one is the one I want to have for my life. That is why I always tell people, if you're not married, please, I beg you, don't make the mistakes some made. And they're not going to need God to help them. Wait and let God lead you into marriage. There are some people you go into marriage because of money. Oh my God. Sometimes I cry and then, and then I, I don't get it. And then the young, some of the young girls, they, get in, they want to insult you and all that. My dear, your insult, I didn't change the Bible. You get angry that you change the Bible. Whether you understand or not, that you change the Bible. The Bible is the Bible. The truth is what we tell you. If you are going in because your family is poor, you need somebody that can take, take, take off your, your family, it's okay. it's okay. So when trouble comes, stay in it. Some of you see, you think that, oh, um, I need uh, the guy is good when it comes to sex. The lady is good when it comes to sex. So, mommy, uh, my dear, Marriage is beyond sex. Yes, it's part of it. But after the sex, what next? Huh? After the sex, what next? You are watching us live on Facebook now. I want you to ask yourself, are you sure of the woman you are staying with? Are you sure of the man you are living with? You are not married yet, but the behavior of this man it's not right and you still want to be there. You are not married yet and the way this lady behaves, the way she doesn't respect, the way she moves around, you are still with her. The future is a long way to go. The future is not just today. The future has a long way to go. You don't marry because you are aging and people, everybody wants you to marry. You don't marry because you need money. Some of you, if you don't know what you want, you don't know what you want. I beg you this year, it is high time you let go of your pride, let go of everything and let God help you. You need help. I need help. We need help. You see, if the marriage works, 
our nation will work. If the marriage will work, the church will work. The society will work if the marriage will work. Because today we marry today, tomorrow there is a fight. You go to court and they go and see the way they are fighting. And these people know the same people that way back one year ago, two years ago, they were so much in love. Today they are fighting. Today they are fighting. All because in the beginning they understand what marriage is all about. They think marriage is all about whatever you want, you must get it. No. There are days we go through our struggles. That is when if you are meant to be together, you will stand with each other with no excuses. There are men of God who are married and they are ready to divorce their wife. There are men of God who are married and they are still cheating on their wife. There are women of God who are married and they are sleeping around with people. What are you looking for? Then they will tell you, man, no be wood. Uh, my, my husband is not performing well. My dear, there are days in marriage your husband cannot perform well. There are days in marriage your wife cannot work with because maybe medically or some issues, she may be having issues. It doesn't give you the right to cheat. You are one flesh, one body. You stand with them when they are trouble. That is what we call the vision of God. God wants to see if we can stand with each other when that trouble or storms. But when things are okay, we say, oh, I love him, I love him. But when troubles hit, you see the husband can't stay in the house. He doesn't sleep or he said, I'm not happy at home. Make yourself happy. Happiness doesn't come from anybody. It comes from you. It's within. Don't use somebody as an excuse that I'm not happy at home. My dear, if you want to be happy at home, create it. For every marriage, it has to work. You need to work it out. There is no marriage before you meet. It's, it's already prepared. Oh, everything is okay. You work it out. Every minute of your marriage, every time of your marriage, you need to work it out together. It says, and both of them were naked and they were not ashamed. I am not ashamed to tell my husband my weakness. He shouldn't be ashamed to tell me his weakness. A husband doesn't even care whether the wife dresses or eats. Because the husband's mother is saying that the way your wife is right. Sometimes I don't understand. You've not married to your mother or your sister. You're married to your wife. The Bible says, and therefore the man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to the wife. Stop always allowing your mother to rule your marriage. If you're not man enough to marry and your mommy's boy stay with your mother until she dies before you marry. But if you're a man that you need to get married, please, Respect the home that God has given to you. Respect your wife as a, let your mother know her boundaries. Anything you say, my mother said, my mother said, ah, are you fine? My mother said, my mother said, did the Bible say why you married? Go and stay with your mother. I have been telling people this. If a man comes to marry you and he stay with his family, don't marry him. Stay with his mother. His sister, his father, everybody in the house, and he's going to take you there. My dear, stay where you are. He's not, he's not ready for marriage. If it's mature to get married, he should have a separate way. It's a new family. The Bible says, and the man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to the wife. The father and the mother must understand that the boy has gotten to a stage. A man has gotten to a stage that he needs to be alone to create another family for himself. Then you allow your mother to stay in your marriage home. She dictates what you eat in the house. Man, wake up, you're making a mistake. That is not what God said you should do. You love your mother? Yes. Love your wife too. You know, God knows you love your mother. But he said, it is time you leave your mother and your father. Yes, respect them, take care of them, yes. But separately, let them stay where they're staying. You stay. If you want your home to be peaceful, you can't stay with your parents. If your mother-in-law really means well for you, she will not interfere in your marriage. When she comes to the house, she says what will happen. Uh, mother-in-law, I beg you with all respect. You, your time has passed. Your marriage, you're also in your marriage. Stay where you are. Leave your son or your daughter to marry. And there's a woman too, whatever their daughter is doing, they dictate what the husband should do. Woman, please, stay in your corner. You're not the only one your daughter has got. You're not the only one who has got a daughter. 
You interfere into these people's life and you break, you bring confusion into them. Because what their mother says, he has to follow. Respect your children's marriage. And you, man, be mature enough. Woman, be mature and shut your mouth. Anything you tell your mother, my mother says, my mother says, my mother says, my mother says, and the man will come and my mother said that. Your mother said what? Your mother said what? Your mother should respect your marriage. She respects your home. If you're not ready for marriage, don't go and take somebody's daughter and come and torment her in your mother's house. Don't bring somebody's daughter to your mother's house. Why they will be more treating her? She's not your maid. She's your helpmate. She's your bone and your bone. She's one body with you. Let's stop it. Let's, let's, let's make our marriage work. Your sister doesn't like your, your, your wife. That is why you want to divorce her. Your mother doesn't like your wife. So you want to divorce her. I beg you, my dear, when your mother dies, you won't go with him. And when you die, your mother wouldn't go with you. And when your mother is sleeping around with whoever you want to sleep, or your father is there and they are sleeping, you can't sleep with your mother. All she can do is to cook for you. For how long would you want to be with your mother? Are you not a man enough to be on your own? If there are issues in your marriage, why don't you sit down with your wife or sit down with your husband? Talk about it. The two of you hold hands together. Let God lead you in the marriage. Pray about it. Mother-in-laws, pray with your kids. Pray for them. Let their marriage work. Let their marriage stand. Don't interfere. Pray for them rather. Advise them. Your son saw that woman. And realize that it is time for him to be alone. You are the one judge. I don't like that woman. I don't like their tribe. I don't like that. If it's based on tribe, then you're making a mistake. If it's prayer you have prayed, or if the way the lady reacts and you know the, the future wouldn't help, sit down with your son and tell my son, my son, I love you. But where you're going to, I think you need to pray more about it. This character and all that. It's good to advise your child or your daughter that this guy you're going to marry, I know the future will help. So let's pray. Don't rush. It's good to advise. But please, you know the guy has done nothing to you just because of the tribe. I, I, why would you do that? Instead of you to pray with them, pray for them. Make sure they are marrying according to what Bible says they should do. And if God is with them, what is your problem? God will handle them. Sometimes some women are crying within because their mother in laws have, have, have taken over their marriage. She goes to the kitchen and cook. She does that. Do this for my son. No? My dear, if you have a son, me too, I have a mother. Stop coming into your heart. Your, your child, it, it normally happens with, with the men. Their mothers, and let the man have a little money. Their mothers, because of my, my son's money, which money? Which money? If you, want, if you don't want your son to marry, marry your son. And leave somebody's daughter alone. The woman I met to say, Mommy, the things people have told my husband, this man has stood with me. He never listened to anybody. People say, You should divorce me. Uh, look at the way I look. I, I, I'm not attractive again, everything. But this man has stood with me. He has been faithful to me. He, he doesn't allow me to do anything. He does everything for me. Mommy, thank him, husband, for me. How many men? How many men will stand with their wives even when they are on their dying bed? How many men will stand with their wives when the situation becomes worse? How many women will be faithful to their husband if they can't perform on bed? How many women will stand with their mother money or no money and be faithful to them? Now young girls that have come, they, they don't want to, some of them don't, they don't want to work, but they want to live big. You want to live big on what? They want to get men who already made. They, they are not ready to work with them, suffer with them, nothing. All they want is the big weddings, the big gowns. After the gown, what will you eat? After the big parties, what will you eat? When things become too hard, who do you know? Do you know how to call on court? Mothers and fathers, let's educate our girls that are coming up. Oh. And our young girls are just following the bats. Big buttons, big breasts. They think it's fun. They think it's a joke. Just sleeping around. Anybody you meet, you want to sleep with. There are some men who are married and still not content with their wife. What are you looking for? What is it that you are looking for? What? What are you looking? I don't know who has a son. Then any minute you, 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 you're in your son's home, 
Five minutes, you're your son. You call your son. Is your wife okay? Uh, uh, what, what did she cook? My uh, mother in law, I beg you. In your time, nobody did that to you. Stay in your corner. If somebody even did that to you, are you happy about it? Why do you want to do the same thing to somebody? Why do you want somebody's daughter to suffer because you think you have got a son? Let them have their family. Let them have their, their life together. And stop. Enter into the home because your son has got money. Your son is a banker, he's a doctor. So what? And so? If your son could have married you, he would have married you. Your son needed somebody else to marry. So let your son enjoy his, his, his home. Your son is torn between you and the wife. Why, why do you want to do that? Because your mother, he can't disrespect you. And he lost the wife too. Why do you want to bring torment into the marriage? God will ask you if you don't stop it. I said to say, I blame the, the man. You should let your mother know the boundaries. Where the limit is. Always your mother is in your home. Where, 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 where? Every day. What, what is it? Are you the only one who is blessed? Are you the only one? And some of the women, you don't even know how to keep your home. You don't even know how to keep your home. How to shut up with some things. Everything the whole world will hear. Why do you pick a phone and call? You don't know who has got uncles who have got money. Do we understand marriage? If that man is the bone of your bone, you will be careful how you treat him or how you treat her. You be careful how you speak to your husband, you speak to your wife. Why do you want divorce now? Why are you not in love before you married? Why has things changed now? Why has the church allowed things like this to happen? The church is not speaking about it. We go and we say, breakthrough, you are traveling. Yes, they are traveling, but they are divorcing. Yes, they are breaking through, but their marriages are breaking down. Where are we going to? Where are we heading to? If even the man of God cannot stay with their wife and can cheat with the small girls in the church, why wouldn't the church people also divorce their husbands? They will. We've allowed the oil that is upon us. We've taken us an opportunity to mess people's life up. I beg you. Marriage was instituted by God. It needs to be enjoyed. It needs to be worked out together. It needs to stand for the purpose of God to come to pass. Make sure the one you are choosing as your partner, make sure you choose the right person. Otherwise, you are in trouble. I beg you, men of God, people of God, let's listen to this. It's not all about sex. I beg you. And it's not all about sex. Some of our young ladies, when I see them, I wonder what is she wrong with that society. I wonder why they go to church on Sunday and they come back and do what they want to do. What are we teaching them? I, I listened to one interview and the lady is telling me she goes to church and she still goes to other things, other, get another powers. She was comfortable to say that, oh, she goes to church. She pays her tight. She was comfortable to say it. If the church is filled with the Holy Ghost, they must change when they come to church because God is there. They must be taught the consequences of idea. You may be sleeping around till you think it's okay. The consequences of it will, will, will catch you tomorrow. You may think this life is your own. You have the right to do anything. You have the right. You still cheat on her. You beat her up. You sleep around with everybody. And you think you have got the right because it's your money. My dear, marriage is on God. It's based on God. It is God's institution. If you mess it up, God will curse you for it. If you allow your anger, your pride to mess your marriage up without seeking the face of God, God will give you punishment for it because it's not going to be a joke. Anything you sow now, you shall reap it. Yes, many marriages are not honorable because they have already spoiled, they have already defiled the marriage bed already. They have allowed their feelings, they have allowed their lust. Now they marry on lust, not married on, they don't marry on love or understanding. They marry on lust. They marry because he's good or bad. They marry because of material things. He has got money, he has got cars, he has built his house. He's a doctor, he's all that. They don't marry on the basis of God. That is on many marriages. They are not even based on God. It's not honorable again. That institution is an honorable institution. But people have destroyed. The devil has entered and has allowed everybody to destroy it. What do we see now? What do we see 
see now. And when you speak the truth, people have got the guts to sit somewhere who will not listen to the Bible, who will not listen to the Holy Ghost to speak to them. And they will use society, they will use the social media, they will use their knowledge, the one they have acquired in the university. Go and see most of the university uh, uh, lecturers. Most of them, they are doctors, they are PhD, they have everything, but they are not blessed. It's not school that bless somebody, it is God that bless people. There are people who have gone to school the whole world, but they are still begging to eat. Let me tell you, your school, your education cannot open door for you. It is God that opens the door. Because of your pride, some of you, your pride, and you know too much. You know too much. That is why we will not listen to the voice of God. We want to do things on our own. Hey, when did she come? Who is she? I am nobody, but I'm speaking the mind of God to you. I didn't call myself. He called me. I didn't ask for this gift. He gave it to me. I was born with it. So if you don't agree to what God is doing, go ask God and not me. I'm speaking this year. I'm speaking. I'm ready for the truth. I'm ready to be used by God. I don't know about you. This year is not a joke. It's not a year to play around. It's not a year for, for the enemy. I don't have time for the enemy this year. They can play what they want to play. Because God has already told us he's with us. So if God is with me, who should I be afraid of? You may not like what I will say, but I will say the way it is supposed to be said. I will allow God to use me at least. If 20 people will listen, 5 or 10 people will be healed and listen and God will save them. We are not here to make you smile and make you happy. The word itself is it's, it's working on me. It's working on you. It's not only you because you know, to have my battles. I have my fight in my marriage. I have my battles in my ministry. It is not a joke. But it is God. That is when I come like this, I'm too aggressive because I need to be aggressive. This is the way he called me. He called me to be aggressive. He didn't call me to be gentle. Yours may be gentle, but mine is aggressive. Please, I beg you, respect the way mine is. Because I didn't call myself. Somebody called me. And the way he says I should do it, that is the way I'm doing it. It is not a game to play around with somebody's heart, somebody's life. You think we're a man. So you choose who you want to sleep with. My dear, your life is not in your hands, so it's in the hands of God. You think you are too anointed. That as I cry with the hands of God, why are some men of God think that the anointing is just for them to choke? The money they have is to sleep around with any woman with big buttons. So now the, some of the young ladies don't even have confidence in themselves. They have no confidence in themselves. So they have to go to doctors and they will pump. You think, oh, now I've got my, my bath, so I'm no confident. Shame on you. Shame. G getting big uh, buttons doesn't give you confidence. Too. You are joking. You are pretend, You are a liar. Getting big breasts or big butt. It doesn't make you confident. It doesn't make you. You don't even know yourself. You don't know yourself. When you die, take your breast and your, your buttocks. You see how useless you shall be. At that day at the mortuary, you see how the mortuary will, will fall through your body. You'll be on the floor because there's no breast to put you. Stand there and joke with your breast and think I'm beautiful. I am handsome. I'm a TikTok boy. You will die and your TikTok won't go anywhere. Hmm. Mm. Some people I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. My dear, we will not allow the devil to take over the marriages again. We will not allow anybody to stand on our right again. We are, the, we, we are the chosen generation. By violence, we will take it by force. No gentility. By violence. The kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violence will take it by force. No way. Any devil that wants to enter into your marriage, cast them out of the marriage. And then any spirit that's taking over your wife or your husband, cast it out. Don't allow them to, to, to take your marriage. If these slave queens, they call themselves, who are not serious in anything, they are not ready to work, not ready to pray, you have suffered with your husband, and they want to enjoy, may fire catch them. This year, the devil is in trouble. They cannot take what belongs to us. Let me tell you,
you this. Marriage is based on God. It's not based on sex. It's not based on money. God has said he will supply all our needs. Money he will give to me if only I am faithful and loyal to him. Hmm. How can you be comfortable in the church? What you are sleeping with somebody's husband? And you are comfortable to go to the church. You feel no remorse. Then there is a problem in that church. How can you go to church where you dress anyhow and you are comfortable? There is a problem with that church. How can you be in a church while you are fighting with your husband? You are not talking. Your husband is sleeping around. You are also sleeping around. And you are comfortable to go to that church. There is a problem in that church. Don't allow society to tell you what you have to do. Don't allow this fashion world, this so-called 21st century world, where they know and know people are too much in this world, where they're putting the Bible aside and they're using their bush to educate us. I don't need your education. You may be a professor, you may be a doctor. I don't need it. I need God. I need God. Education is, is bonus. Education is a bonus. And it's good to be educated. It's good to go to school. It helps you to be able to manage one or two things. Yes, but I'm not going to rely on my education. I see God is not there. There are people who have gone to school to a level. They are professors. They say there is no God. Who gives you breath? Who gives you breath that you stand there with pride and with the books you have studied, you, you, you are able to give histories and say things. God have mercy on you. Whilst you were talking, do you know how you talk? Do you know how God is making it come out? When I see people in the hospital cannot talk, then you know there is a God. And then they will use their book to manage their marriage. They, they don't pray. When there are issues, we can't sit together and talk about it. Face our differences. You say you want divorce. After you want divorce, will you marry again? What, what made you stop that marriage? If it comes again, what will you do? We rather not fight for solutions. We rather want to quit. And time, mommy, I can't do it again. You can't do what? Did you see before entering into it? The man was even beating him, treating you. Even when he has not married you, and you still said, I do to them because he's, he has money and he takes care of me. He's the one to take care of education. So you are putting God aside and you are putting your trust in men. Cursed be the man that puts his trust in another man. Because, mommy, he's the one taking care of my family. So I have no choice. You have no choice. You are telling me that God cannot take care of you. You are telling me that you cannot wait upon God's own blessing. You want a quick solution. A guy that can give you months, 2,000, 5,000. What, what do you do in your life? What about you? Can't you also work, enjoy God's blessing? Can't you also work and get and say, ah, this is a blessing from God? Can't you? If the man is also blessed, it's a bonus for you. You saw somebody's marriage and you're comparing it with your own. Shame on you. You saw somebody's husband bought a car for their wife. And you're insulting your husband because look at you. Uh, look at the man I've married. Useless man. Shame on you. May God have mercy on you to say that to your husband. Say that to your wife. Somebody say, like, look at my wife. She doesn't know how to dress. She's not trying to talk. You met her. You married her. Did I marry her for you? Today she has given birth to three, four. But it has changed. We can't be the same. Old. When we're not married, when I was not married, I was very slim. When you see my tummy flat like place. Why is it the way I stand? With my color. Fair. Oh, you are so nice. Slim and very beautiful. Oh. Very nice. When I got married, first child, second child, third child, the body has changed. Now the breast is not standing again. It is supported by brazier. Go to those days. We don't use brazier. Ah, me go to those days. Ah, she's laughing. Go to those days. I don't use brazier because everything was standing. Fresh. You can jump around and go. It's so attractive. Very attractive. I thought it would be like that forever. So if you mind me because of standing, they have all falling. They are not standing again. So would you live because of that? They don't know what marriage is all about. When you get pregnant, my first pregnancy, I got stretch marks all over my, my back. Stretch marks. So some of the women, when they get pregnant, they to come on their stomach. It depends on where it will come. So if you don't like stretch marks and your wife also gets it, 
Will you leave her? Then you married her because of her flesh. Then you're making a mistake. You don't know why you married her. You don't know. You don't know what marriage is all about. It's beyond what you see. Oh. It's beyond what you are looking for. It's beyond. It is God's, it's God's vision. Go deeper into God. Go deeper and let God give you revelation about marriage. Can you put your pride aside? You put, I'm not happy. Mommy, I'm not happy at all. My dear, it's not always to be happy. There are days you cry. There are days you smile. Work a marriage out. Work it out. Find solution. And the solution is God. It's God though. If you're not married, please, don't enter into a wrong marriage. Don't enter into And if you enter into it, you are, hey, there are troubles. If you marry a wrong rape, you cannot be bone of the bone because it's a wrong one. If you marry the bone, that is not your bone. Somebody's bone, that person will meet the bone and take your bone. Correct bone will be will fix. If you choose wrong bones, hey, hey, then you will start crying. You know? That is why you need God to direct you. You need the favor of God. You need, my dear, this year, be more prayerful. Be more connected to God. Put yourself aside and let God be God. Stop, I like that. Stop, I, this is what I want. My dear, it's not what you want. It's what God wants. This year, the refined woman is going to be on fire. This year, the real woman, me, our team, is the refined woman. The refined man. This year. The real woman, our team, is the refined man and the refined woman for God. So when I call you, you said, help Ziba and Beulah, the refined woman and the refined man on God. Tell yourself, my past was very bad, but now I'm a refined woman. I'm a refined man. I'm not divorcing. I'm not leaving my wife. I'm not leaving my children. Go ahead and tell your side chick, I've had enough of it. For how long will you be sleeping around? For how long will you give money to your side chick? Go home, your cause, you're adding your cause because when your wife sees the trouble for you. Why won't you settle? You are growing. You have kids. Settle with your wife. Find your issues and talk about it. Woman, humble yourself and listen to your husband. Let's bring solution. Let's sit down together. Why are you sleeping around? Why are you cheating? Find an understanding of marriage. The two of you are together. Stand together. Pray together. Live together. You know what? There's no restriction in marriage. Let's love freely. I love you, you love me. I love what you're doing, you love what I'm doing. There's no jealousy. There's no, if a woman makes money, she has no respect. I don't respect, we will not respect what? My money is your money, your money is for me. There's nothing to hide. There are many men who are hiding their money. They can't, they can't put their money down because when they put it down, their wife, so, so if your wife takes your money, so if your husband takes your money, so what? Are we not one? If they don't need it, why would they take it? But you know, if you're taking it for a good cause, do it. But if you have a bad motive, God will punish you for it. I'm telling you. We will die and leave money. You. We will die and leave the money. All the properties you are looking for, we will die and leave it. I call all this work. One day you will die. You will die and leave it. We will die and leave it. You will die and leave everything. If you die today, Ask yourself, the money you have hoard in the bank, will you go with it? You go with it. So why do you die, kill yourself because, because of money? I'm a refined woman, no? So are you. You are a refined man. For God. Not for anybody, but for God. We are living for God, not for any man. So I want you to sit down with your wife and your husbands. And let's talk. Let's find solutions to our problems. Why are we not talking? The husband has left home for almost six months now. What happened? You loved this woman. You loved this man. Don't allow the spirit of divorce to set into your marriage. Don't allow your pride to set into your marriage. Make solutions work in your marriage. Sit down together and talk. Sit down. Sit down and talk. What are we fighting for? Let's ask ourselves. What is it? He said, my husband is not satisfying me in bed. And some of the men will say that my wife, when you're sleeping with her, she's just like that, sleeping there like that. What do you want her to do? Lift her legs. If you want to lift her legs. 
is the way we treat ourselves. My dear young lady, my dear you, a woman, you two, when it comes to bed, you two of you should communicate together. Anyhow you want it. Only if it's right before God. Do it. Enjoy it together. Maybe she's not enjoying because you're not treating her well. So she doesn't feel for having sex. Because you just want to have sex. So she'll just leave it for you to come and have sex. But she's not ready for the sex. Or because you don't treat her well. Or because you treat her anyhow. You think she will enjoy sex with you. No. Let's be content with who God has given to us. Let's enjoy our home. Let's make our home work. I beg you. This is a beautiful year. That the two people must work it together and become one and enjoy. If you're not married yet, please seek counseling. If you come and we tell you this one, it won't help you. Don't force it. If you enter into it and there's trouble, you see, it's better you get the right person and stand together to death do you part. That one, you'll be comfortable to stand. But if you get the wrong person, they can't stand the heat. They will leave you because they are not your bone. They will leave you. And some people, no matter what you do to them, they will go because they didn't come to marry you. They came for your money. They came because your father is the minister. Your father is the apostle. Your father is the bishop. So they just want the name. Some people just marry because your, your sister and your father, they are in US and they know when they marry you, they come and pick you. That's why they married you. They didn't marry you because they love you. So when they get to US, they will leave you. That's why they come and pick some women from Ghana and take them to abroad. Some of them, the moment they get there, they see, I don't know what they see, why they see men there. That man you are, you are seeing, is not, your husband is not a man. Then before you see, you take them to abroad. Or so what's this? Now she can speak English. Now, now, now. She, oh, I, I, I wonder. You take women. Some of the women. Some of the women in abroad. They can't stay in marriage. Pride. Pride. So they can't stay in marriage. They they know my rights because in abroad the, the the women have got power. You have got power for what? You have no power. Nobody has got power. No man or woman has got power. The power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Power. Power belongs to God. Doesn't belong to you. I beg you. Let's keep the marriage together. Let's keep our home clean. Let's bring sanity to our homes. Let's work it out. Work our differences out. Work your differences out. No matter the mistake that has been caused in the past. No matter the ups and downs that has been caused in the past. She is not perfect. He is not perfect. Let God help you in this marriage. Let God direct you in this marriage. I beg you. You need God. I need God. To make it work. We need God. Let's find God. And I know as we are working towards it, God is going to help us. You need God, I need God. Let's do it together. Remember, this journey of marriage is not based on any man of God. It's based on God. This marriage is not based on what you have. It's based on what God has in store for you. Let's seek God. Divorce is not the answer. The answer is Jesus. Let's find him. Okay, Peter. You get my number, then we'll talk, okay? God bless all of you. Yes, let's learn to talk things over. Let's learn to talk things over. Pride is killing the marriages. Let's fight it together. Let's do it together. God bless you so much. I thank God for tonight. I thank God and I bless you. Ben Benedict, I God bless you. Let's look for God. This year, let us be on God. Remember, tomorrow too, I'll come live. Tomorrow, I'll do something. There's going to be a marriage here tomorrow. I'll give you a little video of it, then I'll talk to you about it. Tomorrow. It is my younger brother's wedding engagement tomorrow. My younger brother. I think he follows me too, yeah. I think there's another one at my back before him, yes. So let me say he's the man of, of our home. He's getting married, God willing, tomorrow. Doing engagement. So I'll give a little video tomorrow. Then I'll talk to you about it. 
I'll explain some things to you. The, the, the things they do, the marriage rights, the things they bring, and the things we do, that thing is a ritual that we do. That is, that is a spiritual ritual. That is the marriage, that is what it's based, that is the marriage itself, the ritual. I'll give you a little video of the ritual of marriage. We'll take it, action will come, we'll take it. We'll be live on Facebook, we'll take it. Then I will talk to you about it and make you understand what marriage is all about. So you'll be able to be careful. If you're married, be careful and protect your marriage. If you're not married yet, be careful before you enter into marriage because it's a spiritual ritual as we do and it's a covenant. If you break it, you can't go scot-free. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you so much. And please, mother-in-laws, help your kids to marry. Don't interfere. Pray for them. Leave them to marry. Stop my daughter saying, I don't know who has got daughter. If you gave birth to your daughter, somebody also gave birth to that, that man. Someone treated somebody's son. Because the father is a, 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 a man who has got money. So whatever he said, my dear, if you have got, you have got money, it's in your pocket. Leave somebody's son to enjoy your wife, your, your, your daughter. And stop giving restrictions and orders in your home. Their home is not where you stay. You don't give orders in, in, in your child's home. Let them rule their, they, they enjoy their home. I beg all of you. Thank you so much. Ah, God bless all of you. I just love being here with you. Thank you so much. And, and happy, happy new year to everybody. Till we meet tomorrow, the marriage rituals will start tomorrow. And you will see it. Then we'll talk about it. This year, you're going to see me more by the grace of God. God is going to impact into you. And after this, I'll let action get the video bit by bit. And we'll put it on YouTube. You go to my page, The Real Woman in Me, on YouTube. Go there, subscribe, and you get the bit by bit video. From now, any video we'll do, we'll cut them bit by bit to be able to, it will be, it will be on YouTube. Every time you need it, go back there, read it, learn it, empower yourself, pray with it. And God is going to change our lives. Thank you for joining me tonight. I love all of you. God bless. My number is 055236940305. Yeah, she watched engagement on Facebook. I put on Facebook, don't worry, you watch it. 055236940305236940305. -05 if you want to join our WhatsApp page, please contact Mama Mercy. She's on page, she will let you have it. Just give your number to Mama Mercy on my page. She will let you have it, and then uh, we can talk. For the meantime, the Real Woman in Me WhatsApp phone is off, but we are working it out. So just give me some time. But you can still send your WhatsApp or your, I'm trying to do it today. We we'll actually will find something, we'll do something. So because I know most of you have been calling me since Christmas and all that. I have a little issue with the phone, so we are working it out. So please, if you call me and I don't pick, or you send me and I don't reply, I beg you, I have issues with the phone. So I'm working on it. I beg you, give me some time. I want to get, uh, we'll fix it, and then you hear from me. Thank you. So you can call Actions Line on my line. Or when, if you want to talk to me, you can get to Mama Mercy. She will tell you how you can get to me, then we'll talk. It's 055 2369 And every Monday, we are on Praise TV, 10 p.m. to 10, 10.30. We need people to come and sponsor the TV program. We just will do your adverts for you as a sponsor, then we just do it together. Please come and sponsor the program on Praise TV every Monday, 10 p.m. to 10.30. So we could be able to stay because Praise TV, we need to pay the airtime. It's TV, so we need to pay. So we need sponsors to come so we'll be able to do adverts for you so that we'll also be able to pay our bills there. Thank you so much because we are touching lives and God is going to bless you for it. Thank you so much. We'll meet tomorrow. Good night. I love you. And for my husband, Apostle Dr. Sumudro, I love you so much, Papa. This year we are going higher, higher, higher. I love all of you. Thank you so much. Mama Mercy will add you. If you want to be added to our WhatsApp group, just get in touch with Mama Mercy. She will add you to the WhatsApp group and then we can talk from there. And those who join the WhatsApp group, I don't know why you join until later you leave the page. Please, if you want to join, please, let's be serious. And let's join. I beg you. If somebody helped you or something, you can talk to me privately. We'll talk about it. But please, don't be angry and leave the page. I beg you. God bless you. I love you. And from Action, we say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. We love you all. Thank you. Good night.